Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a Scottish Poetry AI using GPT-2. I did create a Poetry AI a few years ago using an RNN and it was kind of successful, but this was um, before uh, GPT-2. Uh, GPT-2 is a natural language model that was produced by OpenAI and they released it uh, late last year in 2019 um, and it is one of the most uh, advanced uh, natural language models uh, that currently exists and in fact when they when they launched this library when they announced it uh, OpenAI said that they were a little reluctant to uh, release it publicly because they were worried about what it would be used for um, so here's a story from The Verge at that time where uh, they were publishing the AI but they said that it was they were kind of worried about how it was going to be used it might be dangerous so in this video I'm essentially going to use this GBT2 library to create a Scottish uh, Burns Poetry AI. So the first thing you need uh, to build something like that is you need some training data and a great source of training data is something called uh, Project Gutenberg uh, where they have lots of um, texts which are out of copyright and the complete works of Robert Burns are there and you can download it in lots of different formats but you can download it in text format uh, which just, get, just gets you the kind of raw ASCII text. Um, and, uh, and then you can use that to build your AI. Now the problem with the text is it contains things like ISBN numbers, chapter headings, uh, page numbers, indexes, things like that, and forwards, descriptions of the poems that aren't actually the poems themselves. So um, what I had to do with this was tidy it up a bit. Um, so I created a um, training data set. Uh, here's the training file, it's called uh, burns.txt. And what I did was I essentially removed everything that was not poetry or songs by Robert Burns. You'll see there it, it looks uh, a, a little bit, uh, um, it has, has the structure that we're looking for. It has uh, uh, short sentences and verses, um, kind of as you'd expect. So uh, in order to start building our AI, uh, we're going to use a Python library. Um, and the Python library we're going to use is, is called GPT dash two dash simple. So if you Google GPT-2 simple, it will take you to a GitHub uh, repo uh, uh, for a simplified library that will allow you to use the GPT-2 models. So here I'm navigating there now. So this is what the GitHub repo looks like. Um, and it's a really uh, nice, simple interface uh, for um, training these kind of models. So there's the uh, install command. It's basically pip3 install gpt-2-simple. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to use some of this, the training code, which is there in the, the usage example. Um, what it allows us to do is to download a, um, a model to our local system um, and then fine tune it for the particular kind of language we want it to generate, which is the Burns poetry. So I'm going to copy and paste that code there, and then we're going to open up an editor, and then I'm going to and I'm going to start to modify it so that it works for for our use case. So uh, here we go, nano uh, train uh, dot py. I'm going to paste in the code. Um, so in this file, um, the the example they give you is going to use uh, the text from some Shakespeare plays. Uh, so that's quite an interesting example as well. We need to tra change that uh, to be uh, our Burns uh, poetry text. Uh, the code that I'm deleting there is just uh, code uh, that downloads that Shakespeare text, which we don't need, obviously, for what we what we plan to do. The other thing, uh, one of the main kind of variables you might want to look at in this file is the model name. Now the model name is important here. Uh, you see there it says 124M, 124 meg. That's the size, I think that's the smallest uh, GPT-2 model. Um, now what I'm going to try first of all is I'm going to try and make uh, make it work with the largest GPT-2 model which is the um, 1,558 million um, uh, uh, model. That's actually it's six point. It's a 6.3 gig model when you download it. Uh, so one of the things I'm going to try and do is I'm going to set a memory limit on how much memory the GPU should use. So all of that config code down there uh, is actually setting the limit for how much uh, GPU memory should uh, TensorFlow should use. 
Now the reason to do that, and uh, particularly on the, the Jetson Xavier, is that, that f the 32 gig of RAM that it has is shared between the CPU and the GPU. Um, so it's important to try to um, try to control how much um, GPU memory you're using so that you don't run out. Um, so that's uh, nearly looking good. I just need to delete that one last line there and then we should be good to, to go. Um, so um, I'm just going to save that now and then we're going to run it. So um, one of the things with this um, training, uh, training uh, model is it's quite big and we have to download it. So, um, oh, here I've got a spelling mistake, TensorFlow as TF. Um, so we have to download that 6.3 gig model. So uh, that takes a little bit of time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up this video. So uh, here you see it's downloading uh, 6.2 gig. This is actually um, uh, speeded up considerably. Um, oh, and I've still got uh, some problems. I'm going to put the source code that I'm using here in a GitHub repo and I'll link it in uh, in the video description. I think I'm missing some imports. There we go. Uh, this just allows my uh, memory limits to work, hopefully. Um, so here you go, you can see again it's it's sped up and you can see how it's just started to, it ramped up, it's used a whole bunch of memory, it's got, there we go, 31 gig and then it's crashed, yeah? So that's actually the Jetson Xavier just rebooting uh, because it can't load the largest GPT-2 model into memory. Um, so I thought that might happen because uh, that is that is one of the largest um, um, models in the in the in that you could load, and um, I have trouble loading that in in my desktop system as well. Um, and you need basically multiple GPUs uh, uh, to use that and lots of RAM. So um, let's try that again, uh, but this time um, we're going to um, use the slightly smaller. GPT-2 model, not the 1558 million, but there's a one that's half that size, which is 774. Um, and again, this is the one that they actually recommend if um, you're not running it on some really large cloud compute, uh, because it will use um, uh, it will use a lot of GPU memory, even though it's half the size of that one that we just tried to do. So uh, let's uh, start this one up. And again, it's going to have to now download um, the slightly smaller model. It's still 3 gig to download. Uh, so Python 3 train.py. So the first thing it's going to do, here we go, it's downloading um, a 3.2 gig model. Um, and you can see here, it's there we go, it started up. So you can see it's using quite a lot of, of RAM. It's using, what's that, 28 gig of RAM. Um, and what's going to happen is every uh, it, it's going to do a thousand iterations, and every every time it passes 100 iterations of training, it'll um, it'll output some example poetry. So you see every so often you see a, a whole set of poetry goes past in the screen there. You can also see that the average uh, um, average training loss is is kind of going down over time. Uh, this is very much accelerated training because. Uh, to run this takes about 100 minutes. Um, on, a, on a really good GPU, you can do it in maybe 50 minutes or 40 minutes. On the Jetson Xavier, it takes 100 minutes. Uh, on a machine without a GPU, you're going to be waiting hours and hours, maybe five hours it took on a laptop when I once did this. And we should be finished uh, uh, very soon. Uh, and then we'll take a look at uh, the out output. Now, one thing is in my last RNN training model, it would generate lots of garbage and lots of it wouldn't make sense. So one of the things I'm looking for is, in general, how, how often is this model output in garbage and can you actually make sense of it? So here we are looking at some output. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up um, the training data. And one thing I want to make sure is that it's actually producing um, new and uh, uh, new verses. It's not perfectly recreating the training set because then it's just copying Robert Burns rather than creating uh, new, po new poetry. Um, so one thing I noticed here, um, by the way, the, the text on in the black background is the AI generated text. The white background is the training data. So that's the original Burns poetry. So a phrase that caught my, uh, my eye here was uh, when day was wax and weary was the original training text. And uh, there's a start of a um, a start of one of the verses here was when day is wax and weary. So it's a slightly different phrase. It's got is rather than was, but it's still grammatically correct. It still works. 
Um, here's another phrase. Um, I was interested in this castle wa, which actually means castle wa, wall. And the fiddler fray the castle wall, which means the violinist from the castle wall. Um, and you, you see it's actually, it's, it's new text that it's generated. It actually makes grammatical sense. Now here's an example where it didn't make good sense. It's when the cows are gone to the ken. So, um, um, gone is, is a, uh, cows can go somewhere, gone somewhere, but to the ken, it thinks ken is a uh, place or a noun when ken actually means to know in Scots. So that's one of the cases where it didn't make grammatical sense. Anyway, um, seemed to work pretty well, better than my last time, uh, last time I tried this. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know uh, if you like this kind of content.